Well, hello. Hello. Is that you, Cameron? I, I can't tell. Uh, I'm feeling rather animated today, George. Mm. I got to tell you. Feeling uh, rejuvenated. I feel like I looked in October of 2019, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, welcome everybody to the show. It's three o'clock on Thursday and it is live at Epiphan. Uh, today we've got a pretty fun topic. We've talked about Adobe Character Animator before and uh, we're revisiting it as a potential solution for low bandwidth streaming. So we'll get into some more details in a few minutes. We'll just take a look at the chat. Tim, thank you for tuning in. And yes, it is Turkey Day for our friends down south. Yeah, and as I pointed out in chat, uh, Thanksgiving up here in the frozen north was uh, back at closer to the beginning of October. Uh, so <laughs> we've we've been there, done that for a while now. But yes, thanks uh, for joining us today, Tim, and, and everyone else in the States for taking time out of your holiday Thursday to, to join us uh, here at Live at Epifan. And, and uh, hi to Linda in chat as well. So if you're in chat, feel free to say hi um, where you're from if you feel like it, but you don't have to. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, if you find this interesting afterwards, share it with someone who might find it interesting and pass it along to people and do all the socially things, the, the follows, the likes, the subscribes and all that jazz, uh, cause we're here every week doing something like this. Uh, so anyway, you mentioned we had done this before Cameron, um, in it just as a fun way when Adobe, I guess, first started launching this. Um, and now we're, we've kind of been looking at it for some new ways, like you mentioned, low bandwidth. Um, and there's some other things too, but, uh, low bandwidth might be kind of one of the first ways for those of you who don't know, Cameron has terrible bandwidth where he lives because he lives <laughs> in the woods, basically on an Island where, you know, there is no physical landlines of any kind. Uh, they communicate with, uh, cans and string in the trees. Um, well, and sometimes the, the 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 can strings get a little frosty. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a little get a little dampness on there. It gets a little wet. Kind of slows down the uh, the megabytes turn into megabits, and and you know it slows it down quite a bit. But um, George, you're right. We have we've played around with Adobe Character Animator a few times, and mm -hmm. actually, um, you know, the very first time that we used it. Uh, we had a different character on that was Lucky the Unicorn. You could, yeah. should just be able to see it. We're going to roll a clip of that here uh, while we talk about it. Now, um, way, way back. So what we originally did was we ran Adobe Character Animator. Um, it was a pretty laborious setup because in our studio, we didn't really have a way to isolate audio. Right. So I had to, I had to sit over on the other side of the of the studio so that George and I could still talk to each other and hear each other and look at each other, but so that his audio didn't get into my... Uh, mic for messing up the lip sync and we used chroma so we actually had um we had adobe character animator running with a chroma background and then we keyed out that background and then brought it into the production uh, we played around with a couple of different characters you can see there's um spiny the hedgehog or whatever the whatever <laughs> the deuce his name was but um but yeah that was a lot of fun and it was really cool to play around uh, with character animator even though we were kind of limited with the um with the chroma and you know i was super impressed with just how responsive it is yeah how easy it is to use right like um we see facial tracking uh, over the years where actors have had to put these you know these little red dots on their face ping and pong balls it, all kinds of yeah crazy ping pong things. balls and morph and suits know, with lines and stuff and yeah. Totally, totally. And it, you know, it, it does interfere with the performance. It takes time and you have to get those dots in just the right spot. Yeah. And Adobe Character Animator takes a lot of the guesses out of that, which is really cool. And it can use your webcam, it can use any other video source that you can run into it. And then of course it outputs uh, an NDI or an HDMI channel, depending on what, you know, kind of what your setup can accommodate. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, obviously it has a bunch of those characters that we first played with kind of built into it. The unicorn, the hedgehog thing. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Um, <laughs> but then later on, we also experimented with it a second time where our uh, colleague Marta made some amazing um, avatars of Cameron and I, uh, which Cameron, you're using again today. Um, and that sort of added, you know, a representation of if you want to customize this and tweak it and kind of really have more fun with it in the way of, of creating a digital representation of, of yourself or something else altogether. Um, and, and the work Marta did on this was amazing. It's it hilarious. 
Well, you're absolutely right. Marta is a very talented illustrator and content creator on our team here. And she took the tools that Adobe provides. So Adobe provides these templates for the mouths and the eyes. And, um, you know, she said she was able to apply a lot of the skills that she has as a designer. And it was really straightforward to map the mouth and the eyes. And even like, um, Adam, if you want to go ahead and play the clip, or I guess I could move my head around here. You can see my (laughs) hair flipping around a little bit. And um, there's some elasticity to it. Yeah. But the second the second iteration that you just saw there, that one was done with NDI Alpha. So that was the next progression with Adobe Character Animator and how we could actually ingest that signal into the Perl 2. So what Adobe Character Animator was doing is it's sending out a clean NDI Alpha channel, which deletes the background out, right? To put it simply, right? It just creates a mask. And then you can inject that character right in. So in the shot that you're seeing, that was actually our practical set Mm -hmm. with George and I sitting there. And then we were covering that up with our characters. And then we had a little bit of foreground as well. So it was, um, I think we had a recording of the practical set actually, because we were still sitting at the desk. But that that one, uh, George, if you can remember, that was really tricky because you and I were sitting next to each other. We had a lot of audio bleed between us, right? Because like the Adobe Character Animator based the lip sync off of your uh, audio and your mouth movement. So, um, you know, you can use one or the other. But to really get the best effect, you have to use them both uh, together, like I'm using now. Yeah, and you kind of have to isolate and do it. So, yeah, it was definitely harder in our uh, studio setup. Funny enough, it's actually easier now because we're not in the same place. Uh, so we can, it's, it's only picking up you. There's no audio bleed. Uh, so it, it's like we were in isolation booths now, which kind of helps a little bit uh, from that perspective. Um, but, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, and back then... Um, I say back then, it you know feels like a million years ago, even though it was basically only one year ago that we did that episode. Um, we jokingly, half jokingly, said that streaming, you know, with characters like this was the future. Um, and when I say half joking, because we thought it was cool technology and people would start to leverage it in some capacity. Well, it turns out that actually is exactly what's started to happen. Um, there's been a trend uh, of of people calling themselves V streamers or V tubers, but essentially using animated characters um, to replace themselves in their content creation. And there's a number of reasons to do this. Um, Some people have done it purely for creative reasons. Other people don't feel comfortable doing face cams for their content creation, but they know having a face in it is more engaging content so they might go with an animated character. The other side is that in the face of a lot of online bullying and harassment, people have wanted to remove their identity a little bit and create an animated shield, if you will, um, over top of themselves so that, well, yes, definitely many people doing this type of content have chosen anime style characters. Um, They've tried to take the approach of, you know, you can't, you can't body shame someone if you can't see their body, essentially, but still keeping the content engaged by, by having some sort of a character present there. Um, so in a way, we kind of called it. It has become a trend. It is becoming more popular as the technology gets easier and easier to use, um, which is really cool. It's really interesting to see. Um, for us, of course, you know, Cameron and I have literally signed our lives away uh in release (laughs) contracts that our likeness basically belongs to a company and uh forever uh (laughs) so it doesn't there's no point in me hiding behind an animated character for the most part um so for us what's fascinating is this low bandwidth concept so cameron normally you attempt to stream at like 720 or 1080 at, at the bandwidths we normally would recommend for that somewhere between two and five megabit what are you doing today that's accomplishing the character? 
So what I'm doing today, and this is actually, if you can believe it or not, one of the use cases that we had talked about back in October was like, you know, if you had to go from a remote location, you know, how would you do it? So I'm I'm located in uh, rural Ottawa. So George and I are maybe about 30, 40 kilometers away, and then we're a little bit further away from our studio. And what I'm doing to get my signal into this animated form is I'm actually sending an SRT video signal from my uh, my house here. And I'm sending that to our production computer. I'm sending, um, it's about, I think it was 480p. So really, 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 really low resolution. You know, we're looking at like a 4x3, yeah. 480p resolution. I'm sending it at 700 kbps. <laughs> um, I haven't sacrificed anything for the audio though. So the audio, I'm still uh, sending that at 128 kbps. And we'll explain that in a moment here. But what I'm doing is I'm sending that to our Pearl 2 in our studio. The Pearl 2 is then injecting that SRT signal and then converting it to an NDI signal. Now, the reason that I've converted it to an NDI signal is because Adobe Character Animator can ingest an NDI signal. So using another tool, the NDI, or excuse me, the new tech NDI uh, virtual input, we're taking that and then bringing it into, into Adobe Character Animator. We have a couple of different options here. We can also bring in the signal using an AVIO into our uh, into the production computer. So using an AVIO converting an HDMI output from the Perl, for example, into, into the computer. But for this one, we're using NDI Alpha, excuse me, NDI um, as an input into the actual program. Now, as you can see, we have an example. So this is a live view of Adobe Character Animator. So this is the character animated in our virtual set. And then in the top right corner, you can see my video input. It's really tricky to see in this view, but there are all of these red and orange and yellow dots that are put around my face. And that's what Adobe is using to figure out my mouth movement, some of my head movement. So if I move it back and forth, you can see that. And you can also see um, just how quick the transmission is. So because we're using SRT and I'm only at about 120 second, 120 millisecond latency from my home to the production computer, that is just about real time for the audio and the actual uh, video that's inputting. And because we're using a Pearl 2, we can also adjust the audio uh, latency. So I've adjusted that just a little bit to make it work with the synchronicity that we have coming back out. And then so I've taken that signal from Adobe Character Animator again as an NDI signal, and we're piping that back into the Pearl 2 and then injecting that into the production as you can see here. Yeah. So this this works well as a as a low bandwidth solution. It works well because we're leveraging a computer that we have in our office offsite and then I can get that 1080p quality and I was even testing 4K quality earlier. Um it was a little bit too much with all the channels <laughs> that I've set up on the Pearl so it wasn't it it had our Pearl at about 78 80% uh, load on there, but you know with a few uh, a few lesser channels or maybe another independent hardware um, encoder then you could run a 4k signal because adobe character animator can output that 4k everything's vector based so you have no loss in the image quality at all and you can really take advantage of that and inject a really nice image into production create a character like we were talking about our uh, v streamers or our vtubers and it also would help you if you don't have a like a great setup at home, right? Because right? I could just be using my my FaceTime camera. I'm using my my Z cam with a nice lens and a little bit of bokeh, but you could just be using your your FaceTime camera or a cell phone, right? Running yeah. an SRT app. Well, I think that's the most interesting part of this is that like you know like you said, 480 at less than one megabit as a bit rate. You know, this is something that normally we would never recommend for streaming. Like that would put us into the category where I would normally tell people it's probably not even worth live streaming at those kind of settings because the quality would be so bad. But you can't tell because we're, you're basically being translated through this filter of character animator that whether you were sending it at 10 megabit or one megabit, it would end up looking exactly the same because character animator doesn't need that much data um, mm -hmm. based on the, that tracking framework. Uh, so it's really fascinating to be able to do that, uh, to send that you know really low bandwidth. Uh, and of course, because you're sending much lower bandwidth, much less data, you're able to reduce the latency of your SRT stream even more than you normally can. Um, so that, that kind of helps as well, which is really interesting. Um, it's a really, really interesting way of doing it. 
And because we're using SRT, uh, then we're able to adjust uh, George's latency as it's coming out of his unit to match mine. And then we can be have a, or obviously we have our fidelity between us right. in the final production. Now, um, something that we left off of the diagram because it was a little bit tricky to, to include in the diagram was the actual audio routing. Yeah. So what we've done for the audio routing is that the final production that you hear me and see me speaking on now, that is the original SRT audio as it was being ingested into the Perl and it's bypassing the um, the Adobe character animator in and out. And then we're just applying a little bit of latency on there to match up with um, with what the actual video looks like. And it's not totally perfect, but um, you know, for an animated character and for what we're doing here, it's it's definitely a lot better than freezing or dropping off because <laughs> you know if we did have a low latency, which we we do see that, and even with yeah. our our hosts and guests that have you know high bandwidth, occasionally there's just a little a little network burp, and you know you might get punted off. Maybe the packets build up and then kind of clear out all at once and cause a little bit of jittering. But at the worst that could happen right now, my character might just freeze for a moment, but it wouldn't actually drop off or become um, degraded at all. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, there's some there's definitely some interesting applications to it. Now, of course, we are using this through the Perl as we've been talking about, but it doesn't necessarily have to be only that. You could use Character Animator just locally, you know, on your own system and pipe that into software, whether you're using conferencing software like Zoom or Teams or whatever, uh, or other streaming applications, if you're just doing all of that on your computer, you could be using this as, you know, just a purely localized source for your other content creation. So, you know, if you have to participate in Zoom meetings and again, you're not necessarily always comfortable with it and, and an animated character is something you want to explore, this is a path that you could play with for that as well. Um, now, obviously, the caveat to that is you have to have the Adobe product to do it, um, which might not be everyone's cup of tea, but the option is at least there. Yeah, and the, um, you know, the, the bar is relatively low in that regard. And when it's when I've played around with using uh, Adobe Character Animator in Zoom, um, it's it's crazy fast, right? Like NDI and the transmission between Character Animator animating um, the movements and the lip sync and everything moves so quickly back into Zoom that you can have, uh, like you don't have to make any adjustments at all to the audio latency between the two programs. Right. I can have the video feed from Adobe Character Animator and still use my original audio in Zoom and the um, you know for the eye you cannot discern the latency there it's it's really quite slick and, and very quick yeah so yeah that's just kind of a little fun tip again this is something that some people use for you know a variety of their own personal reasons when it comes to content creation uh, but it also can be applied as a as a all, a pretty good alternative, a fun alternative to compensating uh, for low bandwidth scenarios to still present something else. Now, not everyone is as lucky as us to have uh, a Marta on staff to <laughs> generate these avatars for them. Uh, <laughs> but certainly, you know, if you have people, if you're buying the Adobe products to do the character animator stuff, well, then you're also going to have the Adobe products to create some of this stuff. And so... Hopefully you can practice that, become skilled, maybe make your own characters as well um, in an artistic way. Uh, I, you know, we're just lucky enough we didn't have to do that for ourselves. Um, mine would be terrible if we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and like you said, there's a lot of uh, built-in characters within Adobe Character Animator. And um, you know, we've talked about deep fakes before. Yeah. You know, Adobe Character Animator can almost be used in the same way because you can use a shallow uh, fake. <laughs> well, you can use uh, still you can use still images yeah. of like a 3D image, right? And you can control the the tilt and the side to side and a little bit of the up and down motion because we've seen some claymation characters in there that look pretty fo photorealistic. But, um, you know, apply apply some filters on there, maybe degrade the quality. You might be able to trick someone if you've got a still image and be able to manipulate that. But, you know, we'll, we'll cover that on another episode. Yeah. So that's going to do it for today. If anyone had any questions, feel free to throw them into chat. Uh, most people are just, you know, kind of making some comments there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think it's a fun little tool. And, I'm, again, I, I suspect that going forward we'll continue to see it used in, in, in trend in a, in a variety of ways in different applications. So thanks everyone for joining us today live at Epifan. Uh, we're here on Thursdays at three o'clock uh, doing these live shows, uh, talking about something to do with streaming, um, usually, uh, most of the time. Um, of course, as we get uh, closer to 
the next round of holidays, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have some fun stuff in store as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that and do all the, as I mentioned off the top, all the socially things, the like, the follow, the subscribes and all those. Uh, keep in touch with what we're doing and we will have a lot more information for you. Next week's episode um, is much more of a product one, I believe. Um, unless this changes last minute, I believe um, we will be introducing Epifan Cloud and let you in on all the details of what that means and what that's going to look like, uh, which is pretty exciting. Um, so I'm looking forward to that one. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you, Virtual Cameron. You're very welcome. It was a pleasure to uh, virtually be here with you. I just got your shallow fake joke, uh, by uh, the way. That's, uh, that was uh. funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, next week will be pretty cool. We've taken AV Studio and uh, completely overhauled it and, you know, taken your feedback and added some pretty cool enhancements there. So we're looking forward to showing that off. And of course, we're going to be getting pretty close to the new year. So if you're enjoying Thanksgiving this week, thank you so much for tuning in. And like George uh, says, do all the socially things and we will see you another time. See you later. Bye-bye.